had press as well. Mm -hmm. Does that change anything at this point, or did that change things in August? Well, I think in August, I mean, the intent of that was to go down in a different environment, uh, to go against a really good defensive scheme, and I'll, it would kind of evaluate where we're at. I think that's what uh, I think was valuable for our team at that point. The teams are different. I mean, the rosters are a lot bigger. Things change. Uh, you know, I kind of look at, like I think I said this the other day, it's like a divisional game. Certainly there's things you, both teams did that, and that's coaching. I mean, you're going to do that no matter you played a, the same divisional team two weeks ago. So it's not, it doesn't hurt you, yeah, I guess is what to say. And, we, and both teams know that when you agree to practice and know that you're going to play this one in the season. But did, I mean, did, could it change something maybe what you would have done in August, like say it had been against, say you've done you're, you're just at a different point. You're just at a different point. Okay. Things are working on, you know, like the pin, everybody's got different ways they want to install their, their schemes. And, you know, you, you, you have an idea of what you're going to get. Maybe it's, a, it's obviously a little bit different than what you're seeing every day in practice. But it's not like you're, you know, I don't think a lot of either team, you know, looking at the practice, I don't want to speak for the Dolphins, but it wasn't like we were sitting up all night trying to trick them at practice. We were trying to warm our course off, see if guys could get open versus man, see how guys handled, uh, you know, blocking against different different players. That's really what it came down to. It was more of a preseason evaluation. And just as the right tackle spot, if Caleb's unable to, sure. to get back on Sunday, what do you, what do, you do there? Do you consider moving Jalen? No, Jalen's not going to move. Okay. So. I don't think we're giving away any earth shattering. Uh, we got a lot of confidence in Jason Spriggs. He's played a lot of big games, and we are, are Colby Gossett. I mean, we'll see how it looks this week in practice. And of course, there's always a chance. You know, who knows, Gary? And then, like I said, in this league, nothing should surprise you. You got to have contingency plans, and no different if you got a guy go down on Saturday. The next guy's going to go up, and sometimes you have to have a practice squad about uh, standard elevation. Uh, yeah, Coach, what, what makes you all so confident about Spriggs uh, being able to go right in there and give you what you need at right tackle? It's just as what he's done in his history and why he's here and what we evaluated and for agency. And obviously, Dave Ragone, Charles London was with him, Ted Monacino was with him. Like what you saw on film, he led, he's played in, he played in NFL games. Uh, he's done a decent job of practice. Uh, Gossett will have a chance too. So, that confidence, and he's gotten better every week. We'll make the best decision that. You know, on Saturday. Are you comfortable with where you are from a run percentage standpoint, or would you like to be running the ball better and running it more? I'd like to be doing everything better. So that's not, like I said, you get into games, okay, everybody's got different philosophies. That's what makes this, this sport fun. Um, we certainly like to run the football, but to say that we have to hit you know, a magical 31 number, no, I mean, if you're going to run into the 30s, you're probably winning that game. Uh, you know, we certainly don't want to have – we just don't want to become obvious. It's probably the best way to say it. And, and a lot of it is how the, how the game's going. You know, I think most offenses now package plays. You know, the RPOs have become, a, you know, in vogue. And really, they're just run alerts pre-snap. And so a lot of people justify those as run calls. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do it. We don't sit there and say, hey, we have to hit this number. I will say this. My history is if you're running the ball and you have 30-something carries, it's probably been a pretty good day. Felix? Uh, yeah, Coach, how did Richie Grant fare in his extended action uh, at the nickelback? Well, you, you know, he just is in there. He's not just primarily nickel. He can go back and play safety. He can drop from anywhere. He can blitz from anywhere, too. Um, like all our guys, he did some good. And there's some plays that, you know, like all our rookies, and there's like every week, there's things I need to do better. It's kind of how I look at it. But it was a good first first step. For, but, but again, we got a lot of confidence, Richie. There's no. It's a long-term plan. Um, we got veteran safeties in there. We got two young safeties that, that we like. Guys, guys on the practice squad we like. Um, you know, Richie played played on special teams. I think it gets overlooked. I mean, it's, everybody's just fixated. Hey, got drafted high. Okay, we're. You know, he, I don't see him on defense. The, he, guys don't see the impact he has on special teams. It doesn't get a lot of. There's nothing flashy about it. But Richie's been a pretty good teams player for us too. And Calvin, how did he look Monday uh, as he come back into the fold? Looked like he like he always did. Charles, how did he practice? Then? Like he always did. Hard. He works hard. Calvin's a good player. Charles, back to us. How important was it for you uh, uh, coming off the London game to, to have the bye week and, and you feel like it's an advantage that Miami has not had that bye? I you know I think you know there's been a few teams that haven't taken it. 
Uh, again, that's, every team's got to make the decision they think is best for them. Uh, it's not going to – just because we took the bye and they didn't doesn't mean, you know, I, who knows what kind of advantage. If you don't play well, like, go out there and you play sloppy, you're going to get beat in this league. Uh, you got to play well to have a chance. Uh, again, I, that's we did what we thought was good for us at the time, and everybody's got to make their own decisions. It doesn't make, mean our way is better or their way is better or whatever. Uh, does it have an impact on Sunday? I guess the stories will be written depending on how the game goes. As you went through uh, practice last week, did you feel uh, to commit to whatever that your guys were getting back into, getting their legs back under? I, uh, we felt pretty good. So. Anthony? How would you describe the team's confidence, of course, getting a win in London and also with everything the team has dealt with injuries coming off, coming off this bye week? I think you build confidence week over week, whether you're improving. Um, obviously, it helps when you win, but you got to see improvement. I've, I've said this before. If you're not objective and you don't take a sober-minded approach on Mondays and Tuesdays, it, it's going to be hard for you as the season goes on because of the bit of Brown teams. We won games that we probably didn't deserve to win. When you turn the ball over, uh, you know you just had you guys made enough plays uh, off schedule, or you know in spite of you. And then you've got, got times where you think you played pretty well. And you get beat. And so, obviously, the ultimate goal, we got to win games. Uh, I don't, you know, just because you win one week, as I said, if you don't, if you're not constantly looking to improve and, and being objective, it's going to catch up to you. And the, the, the good teams are ones that can improve as the season goes on. I've said it a million times, and I'll say it again. I say it to the team all the time. You're not the same team in September that you are in October, to November, to December, and hopefully you get to play in January and ultimately, obviously, early February. So, so you know, so that's what the name of the game is, Anthony. And we got to get better, and we know we we got a ways to go. And of course, the defense has been making improvements. Just of course, everything going on with that. What did you like? What improvement did you like from the game of one from your defense? Position? Well, I mean, they certainly what like you come down to like the way things are set up. You know, teams are for the most part they're going to get yards. You just try to make sure you don't give up. Explosive plays, the ones that really hurt you. You need to play well, situational football. Nothing hurts shattering there. If you play well on third down, they get into the red zone. If you can make them kick field goals, you're going to have a good chance to win. And that's usually what pretty good defenses do. On the flip side, offense is the same way. Like if you can play complimentary, guys can, can play smart in all three phases, not give up, hand them things on, on penalties, on teams or an offense and lose field position. Not not win on situation, you're probably not going to win. So we just got to keep keep going and playing better in all three phases. When you take a look at Miami and going back to what y'all were looking at on the preseason, I mean, when you look at a guy like Tua and when he's healthy, what type of catalyst can he be for that offense? He's a good player. So I mean, I mean, obviously it's uh, well documented what he did at Alabama, and he's had success in this league. And again, it's a, you got good challenges every week. You're going to have good challenges up front, both sides of the line of scrimmage. And there's a lot of talented football players in the NFL. So it makes it fun. And he's a, he's a good young player. And we got, we got our work cut out for us. He can make you create explosive plays, good athlete, accurate. He's a good football player. Well, I, I think, you know, both those guys, I mean, there's, like I said, what makes this league fun, there's a, multiple ways to do things, multiple schemes. So we obviously, it's a very different scheme. Uh, we ask him and Dion to do a lot of things differently than they've done in the past, and that's not anything, a shot at anybody else or not saying, you know, whatever. It is what it is. You come in, it happens all over the league, right? And so um, there's always turnover year over year. Uh, you know, there's players on your roster. I'm excited about the guys that are on the Falcons. You know, guys, whether they're here before or guys we added in free agency or the draft class. But Poya and Dion, their roles are very different, um, and they've both done a really good job. And so, very pleased with what they're doing. They've been very productive. Poya is a smart player. It's not just because he went to Yale. 
we've got we've got a lot of Yale guys here. Um, some are smarter than others. Foyer is certainly smarter than some of the other Yale guys we got here. That's including the coaching staff. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, uh, I'm not Brent Musburger. I don't have a uh, setup. I don't know what casino he's got up there. Is there a way to, I don't know. Way to quantify what that improvement looks like in terms of how good you are at the end of the year? Or, or are you just different? Maybe you're not. I think you're different. You know, obviously, um, you know, the team's different because you're naturally going to deal with injuries. You're going to evolve certain ways. Um, yeah, you, you've got to be a much better team by week 17 or now week 18, right? So. I don't know. I have a hard time putting spread. I guess they, again, there's guys that are pretty good at that. Maybe you should ask them. I think it's Musburger, right? He's the one who went out there. Yeah. Um, so I, I, it's hard for me to put that on there, but I just, you, we got to be better. I mean, you'd like to th think the things that, that you did poorly in early in the year aren't still happening late in the year. Well, it's schematically, technique, uh, you know, the mental errors, stuff like that. You hear often from coaches about just how tough it is to win on the road. You guys have uh, a win in New York, a win in a home game that was in London, and a close game in Tampa Bay. Just how pleased are you with how well your team's done away from home? Yeah, it's it's interesting. I think the it's been documented too. I, you know, I don't have a great answer for you why it doesn't seem like home field has been as big as it's been in the past. I, I know the numbers are. Uh, I've seen it. I don't you know I don't, I don't have the photographic memory like some people in this league. Uh, but so but I know this. That the um, it hasn't seemed to be as big an advantage as it's been in the past. What are reasons? I don't know. You know, I've certainly last year you make the argument most of the stadiums were empty. If there was, it wasn't crowd noise wasn't an issue. Uh, we need to do a better job at home. That's one thing that bothers me. Um, you know, for our fans and just you know, we want to make Mercedes Benz a, a, an advantage for us. And uh, we haven't held up our end of the bargain. We'll get there. Um, again, these guys are we got a resilient team. So really, mindset-wise, you're right. They've done a nice job on the road, and we've got to continue to do that this week in Miami. Michael. Is there, a, a, for you and your experience, a point in the season where you're like, OK, I expect my team to be rolling or in a good position by week X or month X? Well, certainly you want to. Like, you don't want to start in a hole. I don't think anybody wants to. You know, lower expectations. Say, hey, let's start slow. That's why it always makes me laugh a little bit when you get to when you're watching games and it's whatever sport. Like, hey, you need to start fast. I don't think anybody's ever been in a. In a I've never been around a team or a coach and said, hey, guys, let's let's ease into this one. Um, so certainly, you know, objective. You want to play well early. When you don't, that's the reality, right? So our reality is, is we're two and three, right? So plenty of football left. We got 12 games. We got a whole season left ahead of us, and. We need to win. You got to get better every week. Like I said, there's not the same team. Uh, but yeah, you want to be every step of the way. You want to be winning, and, and you just want to make sure you're improving. So you see it every year, right? Teams that they start five and zero, oh, start six and two. Like I said, I've been a part of the six and two team. You finish eight and eight, uh, and you can't. As I said, you can't get too high and think all of a sudden that you, you know you, just because you're six and two at the old halfway mark that that you're all of a sudden entitled to a playoff spot because it doesn't work that way. Right. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, you want to be peaking at the end of the year. Yes, certainly. And then some years, you know, like I said, you've got to deal with the realities. Like, uh, you're going to have to deal with injuries. Things are going to come up. And that's why you got to build the depth of your program because you're going to be relying on it. Like, I just, it always made me cringe when guys, you know, they, they try to act like, hey, I'll worry about the starters. The other guys didn't play well. It's like, no, you're going to be relying on everybody. And part of your job as a coach is to make sure we develop and, and guys, they're going to be they're going to be playing at some point. Everybody on our roster is going to help us at some point. Even maybe they don't game day. They, they, there's a huge job to do here, starting today at practice. Uh, it's underrated the looks you get from the show team, guys. You don't want to lose your competition either as the season goes on. And, and you know, I, again, I, I'm not going to get into a ton of our theories, but um, you'd like to be hitting your stride at the end of the year, and you'd like to be in it so you're not out of it, so you got a chance. 
No. I'm going to assume that's a compliment, but uh, I'll take it either way. <laughs> take it as it comes. So. You're speaking a lot of business language when you're talking about football, so I didn't know if he was a guy. Who... No, no. I'll have to look him up. Again, I'm going to assume that's a compliment, compliment Anthony. Well, no, I'll have to go look it up. No, but I'll say it's not, I, yeah, I'll be happy to look it up, but uh, I'll say uh, thank you for the compliment. <laughs> Um, I know it's early in the season, but what have you learned just from being head coach so far that you maybe didn't expect to learn and move on? Uh, that's a good question, but you know you get asked that a lot. I think every step of the way, and I think you guys could probably attest this in every job you're in. You know, you try to mentally prepare yourself what may come up. You know, you get advice from people, but until you go through it, I think what's true. I mean, the things that come across your desk, and you got to be able to problem solve, and you're. you're you're responsible for a lot of things, and it's what you signed up for. Uh, again, it makes me always cringe when guys act like they're a victim because you get criticized or you, you know, oh, I got this or that. Like, that's a job you signed up for, and I enjoy it. Uh, I really like our players. Uh, we got a great group of, of, of guys, guys with the right mindset. But certainly there's things that come across your desk every day, and you got to deal with it. And like a lot of things in life, how your mindset is, how you handle it. Anything else? Yeah, any injury updates? Um, all those guys he led, um, you know, we're, we're hopeful. I guess the best way to say it, but again, we'll be smart about those guys. Uh, we'll, we'll see how they, kind of where they're at at the end of the week. I know. I, I, was, I, I was upset. I gave a pretty decent injury update on Monday. I know you, we missed you by about five yeah, minutes. I, I, got, I got the audio. He had a good injury update. Okay. Coach, Coach D gave a pretty decent update, too. Okay. okay. I didn't know if the notes got passed on to you. So. Yeah. Yeah, it was, no, but no, no, seriously, so um, those guys are progressing. Yeah, and I'm not trying to be evasive here. Uh, we'll just see by the end of the week. All right, anything else? Anthony, Sonny? <laughs> uh, I don't mean the reason is to go backwards, but when you was in London, what is one thing that you took away from the trip that you, of course, enjoyed besides getting the team to win? Uh, you know, I thought it was a really cool opportunity for our team. Um, I think the NFL did a great job with it. The NFL UK, I, I know I said that after the game, but I meant it. Uh, I wasn't trying to pander. Uh, it's a cool experience. I mean, that's the thing about football, and you never know where this journey takes you. And for our players, you know, you got a lot of guys that never have been out of the country. Um, I'm a big believer, and you, you can do it. And again, uh, some people are way more fortunate than others. I've certainly been where it gives you a different perspective on life. Um, I think travel is healthy. Can see how most of the rest of the world lives. I know London, pretty similar to the U.S. Uh, but I thought it was cool for our players. There's some guys that were really excited about seeing it. You know, Felipe and, and Frank at Darby had never been out of the country. Um, I thought the, the, the play, I mean, it's a beautiful time of year to go over there. Uh, we were sitting in the English countryside. It doesn't get prettier than that in October, especially if you like the seasons. Uh, like I told them before, if they want to send us to Barcelona, we'll go. If they want to send us to Madrid. We'll go, we'll go to Frankfurt, we'll go to wherever you want to send us, we'll, we'll, we'll get ready to play. I saw a little bit of the end of the game. I saw the numbers, but there's there nothing that, again, uh, you know, I have to focus on players, but uh, obviously I'm a huge fan and, and appreciative of, of Derek. Um, Nothing he does would surprise me. Glad we don't have to play him this year. <laughs> All, right, All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.